Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wine Down Wednesdays. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 50. So before we start with our topic tonight, I just wanted to briefly say that episode 52 is coming up. That means one full year of Wine Down Wednesdays. And I have in mind a little bit of a celebration for episode 52. What I'd really like to do is a live kirtan practice. And kirtan is a form of meditation that uses a call and response song or chant. I've written several kirtan meditations. They're available on my website at paulataylorenergy.com or on my YouTube page, which is also Paula Taylor Energy. And they're also available on all the streaming services, Spotify, etc., as uh, under Paula Taylor Energy. So that's a really special form of meditation. It's one of the first ways I learned to meditate along with yoga was through chant and specifically through kirtan. And so I'd love to share that in a live setting with you. I'm not exactly sure how the technical details of that will work. So I may talk a little bit more about that next week, but that is my intention for episode 52, which will be in two weeks. So I hope that you will join us for our one year celebration of this Wind Down Wednesdays practice. So tonight we're going to talk about cultivating a beginner's mind. And I'm going to tell you how this topic came to me before we talk about exactly what that means. So I just got back from a beautiful trip to the beach and it was one of those things where I didn't realize how much I needed a break till I had a break. I really did take a full break. I didn't really get on social media. I didn't do any work with my website. I didn't see any clients. I didn't work in my day job. I just actually took a real vacation, a real break. And one of the things we did while we were there was boogie boarding. And I realized that it's exactly 20 years ago that my husband and I lived in Hawaii. And one of our favorite things to do in Hawaii was boogie boarding. We would go at least once a week, sometimes more, for an entire day. We would just go to the beach, we would bring a bunch of food with us and in and out of the water all day long boogie boarding. And the waves in Hawaii are no joke. If you've ever spent any time on certain parts of the island, we were on the big island and this was kind of the winter storm season, the, the smallest waves were usually four to six feet. Sometimes they were six to eight feet. Sometimes they were eight to 10. Sometimes they were 10 to 12. And, and we kind of avoided going in when it was that big. And, and it's interesting when you're in the water, those waves, four feet doesn't sound that tall, but like when you're in the water and it's kind of coming towards your face, you know, if you get hit with a wave, even a four foot wave can really knock you down. You can actually get injured. And so we got pretty good at it because we did it all the time, but I really haven't done it since then. And, and maybe once in like 10 years, I've kind of dabbled a little bit. So while we were on this vacation, we found a beach that had pretty good waves. These were probably like three to five feet the first day. We went back the second day and they were a little bit bigger and neither one of us ended up going in much with the boogie boards that day. But I found myself having a completely different experience of this thing that I really had done so many times that I would say, you know, I'm not sure I was an expert, but I was good. I was very comfortable with it. I was not afraid of the waves. I knew how to manipulate my board under or over, depending on the height of the wave or where I was. And this experience felt completely new to me. I felt almost like I'd never done this. And I realized 20 years is a long time. I have a lot of different physical challenges that maybe I didn't have 20 years ago. I also have a, a much different mindset. I'm much more of a patient person. I found myself waiting for the right wave rather than trying to get as many waves in as possible like I might have done when I was younger. 
I also found myself respecting my limits and noticing that my limits, you know, were maybe in a different place than they were 20 years ago. I don't have the stamina that I had 20 years ago when I was doing this every weekend. And I didn't have a problem when I felt like I was needing a break to just take one. I, I didn't feel like I had to prove anything to anyone, which I think, you know, that 20 year difference made makes a big difference in that kind of a mindset. And so I started thinking about this concept of beginner's mind or what the Zen Buddhist called Shoshin. And, and what that is, is essentially approaching things as a beginner, as though you've never done whatever it is before. And so this leads us to more openness. It leads to that eagerness of being new, of beginning something. And it also leads to letting go of some of our preconceptions and our judgments. And I, in that boogie boarding example, I kind of had all of those experiences. I was revisiting this thing that I had done so many times before, which is a huge part of our spiritual practice. We revisit this practice. That's why we call it a practice over and over again. But the goal is to come in with this beginner's mind, to come in as though we've never done it before. And so I had that experience boogie boarding. It was almost like I'd never done it before. I rediscovered my joy. I found myself very eager to keep going. And then I also had to let go of some of those preconceptions or judgments that I had that, wow, I'm really good at this. this I can take this huge wave like, oh, maybe not so much. So I want to talk a little bit about kind of the two parts of that beginner's mind and how they serve us in this spiritual practice and in life in general, because that's why we have a spiritual practice. You know, we don't we don't practice to be in a vacuum. We practice to exist in the world in a joyful and connected way. So when you learn a, a new skill or you try something for the very first time, there's a sense of wonder and excitement about it. And a few weeks ago, I talked about little kids learning to walk and how we get so excited about our kids learning to walk. And they're so excited about learning to walk. And if you think about that, again, you know, once you know how to walk, it's not really that exciting anymore. It's pretty amazing if you think about it, the fact that you could move your body long distances and, and your body cooperates and it moves in a way that you want it to move. And, and I've definitely discovered over the years when you have an injury and you can't walk and then you can walk again, you get that sense of wonder again. But when we're first watching our children learn to walk, we see that and we vicariously experience that joy that they have. And not just in learning to walk, in everything. That's one of the joys that children bring us is, is watching their eagerness to learn and their delight over experiencing things for the very first time. And it gives us that, that part of that beginner's mind a little bit. We get to remember what it was like to feel like something was new and to feel that sense of wonder and that eagerness and that joy that comes when we sort of let go of that jaded experience that we tend to get like, oh yeah, I've done this before. When we can let go of that and we open to the wonder, we can start to experience that even in everyday things. That's, that's what this beginner's mind is all about. So beginner's mind reacquaints us with that awe, with that wonder. But the other thing I want to talk about in terms of beginner's mind is this idea that I've mentioned multiple times before about neural pathways. So neural pathways are essentially shortcuts that our brain develops based on our common behaviors and habits. And sometimes we like to talk about this, or you'll see this described as as well-worn paths in the brain. So if you're in a forest and you're just stumbling through, it's going to take you a long time. You're going to get hurt. But if you stumble across a path where somebody or many people have walked before, your tendency is going to be to follow that path because it gets you where you're going more quickly and with more ease. And that's what neural pathways do in our brain. 
So the example that I thought of for this is the idea of colors. So when you are young and someone shows you the color red, you might delight in the experience of seeing that color for the very first time, but you don't know what it's called. You don't necessarily have a name for it. So then your parent or whoever's with you says, oh, that's red. And eventually you get your neural pathway, you get that little well-worn path in your brain that tells you when you see that color red, this is red. And you don't have to think about it. You don't have to wonder what color is this. You don't have to process. There's that instant kind of pathway. You look at this and you see red. And this is an amazing thing that our brain does for us because if it took you 10 minutes to figure out what a color was every time you saw it, you wouldn't be very productive. You wouldn't get a lot of things done. But it also leads us to making judgments, to making pre these preconceptions that we have based on our prior experience. So what we start to do is we start to kind of tell ourselves, well, I've experienced this before. I know what this is. And then we jump to whatever comes next. And especially if you are a product of trauma, if you've had any kind of trauma in your background, this may have been a survival technique for you. This idea that, okay, I see this behavior and I know what's coming next. And it can be really hard to break out of that, especially if you have a, a background of trauma, especially if you're in that trauma response. But recognizing that that is a trauma response that at a certain point may no longer be appropriate for the situation. It may have been what kept you alive, literally or emotionally, as a child. But as an adult, that trauma response of expecting a certain outcome in a, in a given situation may no longer serve you. In fact, it may be holding you back, especially emotionally. So we can get stuck in these pathways and we begin to make judgments about our experiences without allowing them to be new. And that's why we have a spiritual practice. That's why we practice in kind of a vacuum. We practice in a very safe space, starting to break out of things like the trauma response, things that have those pathways that are worn in, into our brain pathways. <laughs> I thought I was going to get through tonight with that. I'm on a roll of uh, getting tongue-tied for the last few weeks. So the reason we do a spiritual practice, the, we, the reason we participate in this in a safe setting, in a vacuum, is so that then when we go back out into the world and we see that behavior again, or we see that thing that we judge, we've trained ourselves to step back out of that. So I've talked extensively about my experience of having food issues, having body image issues. And, and that's a judgment that's been with me for a very long time that I'm, that I made and, and still make, but I'm made, I'm work, I'm turning that into made about myself and about others as a reflection of myself, not about them, but as a reflection of how I felt about myself. So that's a well-worn neural pathway I had in my brain to see a certain body type, for example, and think that's bad. That's not a good body. I make a value judgment about that. Or I see a body and I say, oh, that's the body I want, even though that may not necessarily be a healthy body, may not be a body that my physical body can attain in a healthful way. So that's one of that's an example of how those neural pathways that served us maybe at a certain point, like if you were trying to survive junior high, like you had to fit in. That was kind of how, you know, that 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 period of adolescent development just depends a lot on fitting in and and kind of uniformity. Unfortunately, I wish it didn't, but but we're going to change that by changing ourselves and changing the way that we raise our children. So that pathway is worn into my brain now. And, and so I practice in things like meditation and yoga and safe spaces, stepping outside of that neural pathway, recognizing 
Not only does that not serve me, it doesn't even make any sense. And in fact, it's really been hurting me. It's been a distraction. It's been something that keeps my brain focused on something that's not really important to me on a deeper level. It's not serving me spiritually. And then I can do the work of letting that go, of stepping outside of that. And one of the ways we do that is by stepping into that beginner's mind, by looking at something with objectivity and looking at something as though it's new and recognizing that maybe that pathway no longer serves us, that those preconceptions, those judgments that we're making are judgments we want to let go of. And we can't change what we're not aware of. We talk about that over and over again. Awareness is always the first step. So this beginner's mind brings us into the present moment. It brings us into awareness. It brings us back into wonder and amazement and joy. In this practice, 50 times now, we have done a guided meditation or will do at the end of tonight's show. And every single meditation has been different. Even though at the, at the root of it, the practice is really the same. It's really about breathing deeply and getting fully into our bodies and exploring these different concepts. We're kind of doing the same thing every week. But I know I've experienced moments of great joy and great wonder and great awe. And that comes from that beginner's mind. That comes from that just little 15 to 20 minute practice once a week of letting go of those preconceptions and those value judgments and letting ourselves open to that beginner's mind, cultivating that newness of experience. Because really, every single moment is a new moment. And we have the opportunity to be completely new in every single moment of our existence. That's what truly living in the present is all about. When you see someone walking toward you, instead of thinking, oh, I've had ex an experience with someone who looks like this before, or this, or this, or this, you know, all these little mind chatter things that, that um, the mind monkey that just chatters in our mind, telling us all these things that are based on those neural pathways that, again, may have served our survival at a certain point. But a lot of times it doesn't. And especially once we start to grow and expand, those contracted fear-based neural pathways in our brain are hurting us. And the only way to get out of that is to step away from that, is to broaden our perspective, is to step into that beginner's mind and look at that person or that situation, whatever it is that's coming toward us, with a totally different viewpoint. And, and to use my example, so maybe I see someone coming for, toward me when in the past all I would notice is, say, the shape of their body. And now I notice that they have a luminous smile on their face, that their presence lights up a room. All these other things that we can notice when we get out of that pathway, when we get into that beginner's mind and we look with new eyes at something. So this week, I want you to practice this on your own. And, and my suggestion for practicing this is to take an everyday experience, something that you do every day or multiple times a day. I'm going to use the example of brushing your teeth. That's a good one, but you can use something else if it calls to you. And practice that behavior like you've never done it before. Look at your toothbrush like you've never seen a toothbrush before. Look at the color of your toothbrush like you've never seen that color before. Think about what a service that toothbrush does by cleaning your teeth, by allowing you to keep your teeth, by allowing your teeth to do the function that they do in chewing your food and, and starting that whole digestive process. When you start to brush your teeth, think about what it would be like if you'd never brushed your teeth before and really feel the bristles on your teeth, on your gums. And notice that you might do it in a whole different way. You probably have a routine, like I'm starting right here, like this is where I brush my teeth on this side. So maybe starting in a different place, as though you've never brushed your teeth before, like maybe you're going to put it in the front of your mouth and what does that feel like? And just 
give yourself even just a minute or two to explore revisiting something that you've done thousands of times as though you've never done it before, as though it's fun, as though it's you're a child with this brush just, you know, what am I doing? And although I guess kids don't like to brush their teeth, but we'll imagine that they do. Maybe it's an alien who's never seen a toothbrush before and you're trying to help them figure out what to do. And there's the pleasure of the bristles rubbing up against the teeth and the gums. There's an old movie that's a, not, not a great movie <laughs> called My Stepmother is an Alien. And the, the plot of the movie is this alien comes and they're going to decide, you know, whether humanity should be saved or not. And and the, the thing that saves humanity is that she experiences a sneeze and she's never sneezed before. And she just finds it completely delightful. And that's a perfect example of that beginner's mind. You know, something that the rest of the people around her had done hundreds of times and thought nothing of. Her experience of that as the very first time filled her with such wonder and joy that she decided that humanity should be spared. Again, maybe not the best plot, but a good example of that cultivating the beginner's mind. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do in our meditation tonight, which is we're going to approach it from a beginner's mind. Maybe I've never led a meditation before, and this guided meditation will be completely different from any meditation we've ever done, because I am also practicing cultivating that beginner's mind. But one of the great things about it is that we're going to bring that sense of wonder and that sense of awe, and we have that opportunity to let go of the judgments and those preconceptions that, that we carry, really, through our lives like rocks on our back. We're just going to let those go just for the next 15 or 20 minutes and, and see how it feels. And my guess is it's going to feel pretty good because it always does. So let's meditate together. Take a deep breath in any way that feels good to you, as though you've never taken a deep breath before. Enjoy the feeling of the air coming in through your nose. Let it out through the nose or the mouth. Notice what it feels like to deepen your breath. Maybe you've been breathing shallowly all day and this is the first good deep breath you've taken. Maybe you're guided to make some noise with your breath. Beginner's mind is also about intuitive mind. So let your intuition guide you in this meditation. Just as a child moves with intuition or speaks without thinking, let that guide you, that intuitive urge that we sometimes lose in those neural pathways. Underneath all of those is that intuition, is that flow that comes from beginner's mind. <sighs> Let yourself become aware of your body tonight in no particular order, with no particular guidance. Use that intuition to feel into your physical body. Use that intuitive breath to breathe into your body as you're called to. Ah. 
Notice your feet on the ground or whatever they're contacting as though you've never felt your feet before. Maybe wiggle your toes a little bit. Feel the deliciousness of moving your feet. Maybe shrug your shoulders up and down. Just move your body a little bit here in whatever way you're intuitively guided to, just like a child might move. Don't think about it. Just let your body start to move some of that stuckness. And then as you're ready, let yourself begin to still. Notice what you find in the stillness. Is your mind racing? Are you thinking of what you've done today or what needs to be done tomorrow? And just breathe into that mind chatter and invite it to become still just as your body has. And then feel into your emotional body now. What are you feeling? Where are you feeling your emotions in your body? Perhaps you're already feeling calm and relaxed. Or perhaps, again, you're feeling pressured. Like you didn't get enough done today. Or you need to get a certain thing done tomorrow. Maybe you're feeling in grief or depression or fear. Maybe you're feeling joy and love. Just breathe into that emotion. Find it in the body and breathe into that part of the body. And again, intuitively, use any sounds that might serve you here. If you need to move a little bit again, do that. Getting completely intuitive here and forgetting how we usually start these meditations, forgetting anything about where we might be going and just getting fully into the present moment here. Letting yourself settle into the body, into the mind, to that emotional space. And now Allow your energetic sanctuary to come into your space, draw your planet to you, as we have done many times before. And if you've not done this, then you get to experience the joy and the wonder for the very first time of finding out that you have a special spiritual space that is made just for you, where you're completely safe. No one can enter this space unless you invite them. Everything in this space is meant to serve you. So just draw it to you now intuitively. And begin to notice where you are. In your mind's eye, notice what you see. Notice what you feel. If you've been to this space many times before, I challenge you to find a new area of your sanctuary you've never visited, completely unguided. This is your space and explore it with completely new eyes. Find out that there's a space here that you've never seen before. Notice what this space looks like. Are you inside or outside? What kind of colors do you see? What kind of sounds do you hear? What kind of smells do you smell? What kind of feelings does this evoke for you, this 
completely new space within your sanctuary. And let yourself do something completely joyful here. Perhaps you turn cartwheels like you did when you were a child. Or you're running freely. Perhaps you're sitting quietly and looking at a flower. Or you're playing music. Let this again be completely intuitive. And practice this joyful activity as though you've never done it before, as though this is the very first time you've ever been able to do this. Feel the triumph and the joy and the wonder participating in this activity for the very first time. Let yourself smile. Perhaps this is emotional for you. Let that emotion flow freely. Let that intuition, that beginner's mind, allow you to express whatever is coming up in the present moment. Perhaps you're moving on to a new activity. Perhaps you're looking at a different area now. Let this all be completely new. No one has ever seen this before because this is your space. It's like you're an explorer visiting a remote planet for the very first time. Perhaps you're noticing wildlife here that looks nothing like anything you've seen on Earth. Perhaps you're noticing colors that don't look like they do in your everyday life. Let yourself expand into this practice. Let yourself expand into this wonder, into this joy of experiencing something for the very first time. And notice how free you feel here. If you have any judgments, that's okay. Notice those too. But allow them to fly off and come back to the wonder of being in this space for the very first time. And as you feel comfortable here, as you feel settled and joyful, I want you to allow one of your judgments or your preconceptions from your everyday life to come into your head here. Whatever comes intuitively is what you're meant to look at today. Look at this well-worn pathway in your brain of judgment of preconception and acknowledge that it may be based on past experience but it's not based on future experience the future has not been written it is new the present is new you are new in the present and the future so let yourself look at this judgment with newness how would you like to change or alter this judgment? Maybe you'd like to just let it go completely. Let yourself intuit how you can best serve yourself 
by allowing this judgment to change. And again, expand into this. Feel that wonder and that newness and that joy and breathe it directly into this judgment. And let yourself acknowledge that the next time this judgment comes up, you won't react to it based on this neural pathway. You will respond to it out of this beginner's mind in this state of newness. The next time this judgment comes up, you will stop and take a deep breath. And ask yourself how you might approach this if you've never been in this situation before. If you didn't have prior experiences to compare it to, would you make the same judgment? Or would you behave and think in an entirely new way? Let yourself expand into that newness. and feel the lightning of that judgment as you allow new life, new energy, new behaviors and responses to come into that neural pathway as possibilities. The possibility to step off that well-worn track is always there. But it can be scary. Maybe the forest is dark. Maybe we don't know what's out there. So allow yourself in this safe space now to step off that pathway of judgment. And notice how beautiful it is wherever you are in your sanctuary. There's really nothing to fear here. Everything is love. The beginner's mind is that neutral loving mind. And remember, as always, you can come back to this practice as many times as you'd like and bring different preconceptions, bring different judgments into this space and really look at them and then step out of them into that newness of the beauty and the awe and the wonder that exists around you. If you'd like to let go of your judgment now, just let go of it and watch it float away. If it no longer serves you to hold that judgment, let it go. If there's something about it you'd like to change, then hold that in the palm of your hand instead of the judgment. And bring that hand to your heart. And bring your other hand to your head, to your brain, that mental space, and internalize this new neural pathway, this new judgment or lack of judgment that you'd like to step into moving forward in the newness of each moment, in the newness of yourself in each moment. Keep your hands there for a few moments or let them relax as you're ready. Take a few last moments to look around this space, knowing you can come back at any time you'd like. Take a few more steps away from that well-worn path. Let yourself open completely to new experiences, to new moments, to newness in yourself, to new beliefs and 
new ways of thinking and new ways of being in the world, deeper ways of loving yourself and loving others, of the delight of being a beginner, of experiencing things for the first time, truly enjoying them. Allow your intuition to guide you back into your body now. You can let your space go. You can keep it with you. Let that be an intuitive decision. No judgments either way. Come back into the room you're in. Come back into your body, into your mental and emotional bodies. And keep your eyes closed for just a minute. Invite that sense of wonder and newness into this space one last time, into your body, into your mind, into your emotional body, into the physical space you're in, into your heart space, into every aspect of your being, physical, emotional, spiritual, into your experiences as we move forward from this moment. Invite that newness and that wonder and that release of judgment into all levels of yourself. And when you're ready to open your eyes, look at your space through these eyes of newness, through these eyes of wonder and joy and beauty. <sighs> so The truth of our identity is this beginner's mind, is this sense of wonder and newness in every moment. We have the opportunity to be delighted, to be in love and joy, and to let these experiences wash over us as though we've never been in them before. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Have a new and judgment-free rest of your week. And I will see you next week for Wine on Wednesday.